Hi, my name is Haley Rogers, and I attended the public lecture on March 12th at Georgia Tech by Avi Loeb, titled Life in the Universe, um, and I am going to be reviewing it today. In this lecture, Loeb discussed recent findings on potential life outside of Earth and what factors impact our search. The nearest system of potential habitable planets is the TRAPPIST-1 system, which is 30 light years away and contains seven total planets, three in what is distinguished as a habitable range. The Sun in TRAPPIST-1 is a twelfth is a twelfth of the mass of our Sun, which corresponds to an immensely longer lifetime than our Sun. Another key system is Alpha Centauri, a system of three stars that are closest in proximity to us and are near the planet Proxima b, which is in the habitable zone as well. Uh, Proxima b is unique in the sense that it is tidally locked, meaning that it shows the same face to its star at all times, resulting in a permanent day and a permanent night side. With these conditions, you could imagine living on the permanent light or permanent sunset side if you wanted. One limitation of Proxima b not mentioned in the lecture is that if one side is permanently turned away from the sun, um, it would be much colder than the other side and not be able to contain liquid water. Thus, only the border regions of the planet between the two extreme sides would realistically be habitable, and it would be limited in resources if there is water and an atmosphere, which are the two main limiting factors. Here you see a uh, size comparison of the Earth and Proxima b, um, as well as where Proxima Centauri and Alpha Centauri are located in relation to our solar system, which is about like four light years away as well as what the sunset on Proxima b would look like in comparison with the Earth. Um, there are many different ways of testing for habitability, um, and all of these different planets are um, very promising and exciting, um, but how do we test to see if they really are an option? Um, what, are, what are the limiting conditions um, of these planets? So first, there must be an atmosphere. This can be determined by testing the temperature of the area outside the planet while orbiting it. This is equivalent to finding the color of the light um, around that planet and relating that to temperature. Um, you can see that in this graph on the top left side. You want a planet that's right in the middle, not too hot and not too cold. Um, we can also test the origin of large rocks that enter the solar system through high resolution spectroscopy. Um, the Sun and Jupiter in our solar system act like fishing nets that hold interstellar asteroids. Um, so this is a common occurrence that they become trapped in our solar system and we can test them. Um, this was extremely useful when a rock that was 10 times longer than wide entered our solar system for the first time. Um, and the largest previously in our solar system was three times longer than wide. Um, and we can determine its origin and see if that planet was or that area that it came from was potentially habitable. Um, the picture on the top right shows a rock, um, obviously much smaller than the actual rock, but just an example of what that could look like. Um, and then another, perhaps most exciting way of finding potential habitable planets is the idea of sending a light kite-like object into space through a series of coordinated laser beams, um, which is the project Starshot, which you see on the bottom right. Um, the object can then travel to a planet and take photographs and then return to Earth. Realistically, it would take this object about 24 years to get to the planet and the same amount of time to return. Um, however, this process is relatively economic and we could send multiple of these. So by the time they're back, we'd be retrieving a lot of data in a short amount of time, comparatively to trying to actually get to these planets. Um, and then finally, another test that can be performed is the detection of biofingerprints um, in which primitive light such as molecular oxygen, methane, and more can be found, all which would indicate that life is present. And we can also test for industrial pollution like we see on the bottom left. Um, although this is an issue on our planet, it can be indicative um, of some intentional pollution by life forms on the planet if the planet is too cold typically. Um, and finally, an organism that has been discovered that is particularly promising for a search for life on other planets is a tardigrade. Um, this is a very small organism that can survive very harsh conditions, such as below zero Kelvin or above 450 Kelvin. 
um, tardigrades work as pioneers for their environments by attracting other small invertebrates to inhabit the space. Um, so tardigrades could do this on a planet which we deem suitable for life. Um, and it also is promising that organisms can exist on very harsh conditions on planets where we would typically deem not in the habitable zone. Um, all this was discussed in the lecture and it was very enjoyable to listen to um, as well as get Avi's um, perspective on um, the life in the universe at this point and our potential options in the future.